networking in AV. Hey guys, this is a topic I enjoy and I want to point out that prior to AV engineering, I was an IT engineer in many capacities. I started out with programming in Pascal and C++, then went into web development, both front end and back end. Database driven websites using Access or SQL, HTML, and CSS. From there, due to the shift and outsourcing of the programming market, I decided to go into Microsoft Systems Engineering and Networking, then added Cisco and other hardware based networking manufacturers under my belt. As a hobby, I always enjoyed both audio and video, and used to build production workstations to run Cakewalk and Cubase VST for my friends, or small studio owners who were interested in digital recording as a backup to their ADAT systems. Long story short, networking in AV has given me the ability to combine both what I enjoy while embracing all aspects of my IT foundation and experience. I would like to take time to go over the networking portion of AV as this is one of the challenges many AV engineers or technicians struggle with today. On simple AV systems, not so much, but once things like latency, trunking, AVB and Dante traffic optimization, or QoS is necessary, your network infrastructure's configuration, topology, and bandwidth will be the deciding factor of the AV system's performance. Many manufacturers market how easy it is to add their AV devices to your existing network. It may work for one unit, but for any commercial scale deployments, I would suggest proof of concept testing before approving the design or bill of materials. Now let's get into networking in AV. In the world of information technology or IT, networking or network is the linking of computer devices with the purpose of transmitting, receiving, and sharing data and resources. There are many types of networks, however, we'll focus on local area networks and wide area networks. A LAN or a local area network is what you have at home or at your local office. And the internet itself is a great example of a WAN, which stands for wide area network. One thing we can't skip is the OSI model in networking. Let's go over the OSI model. The OSI model has seven layers, so let's go through them. Layer 1 is the physical layer. Layer 2 is the data link layer. Layer 3 is the network layer. Layer 4 is the transport layer. Layer 5 is the session layer. Layer 6 is the presentation layer. And layer 7 is the application layer. You don't need to fully understand all of the OSI layers now. But once we cover more, I'll refer back to the OSI layer involved and it will make more sense to you. Now that we've defined a network and went over the OSI model, let's quickly go over network topology. What is network topology? A network topology is the physical and logical arrangements of nodes and connections in a network. These nodes include switches, routers, and software applications with switch or routing features. There are many networking topologies, and we don't have time to go over all of them, but for dedicated AV networks, I would suggest using the star topology if possible. Let's go over the ring and star topologies. For the ring topology, each network switch is connected to another peer network switch. Traffic can flow in both directions, but packets coming from a device on switch A going to another device on switch D will need to pass through the switches B and C or through switches E and F. This will work but may experience higher latency, higher switch CPU usage, and depend on many other switches. For the star topology, each distribution switch or stack is directly connected to the core switch or stack and only relies on its direct connections to the core stack or switch. Lower latency, higher bandwidth, no dependencies on other distribution switches. Let's take a look at the chart which has the advantages and disadvantages of both networking topologies. The tree topology is also an option, especially when you didn't have AV over IP in mind during its design phase, but plan to add some AV or digital signage traffic. In the cables and signals video, 
we went over layer one, which is the physical layer in the OSI model. As I mentioned earlier, the MAC address is on layer two, which is considered the data link layer in the OSI model. This MAC address is the fingerprint of the network device. It's unique to each device, and the first three octets or first three bytes usually identify the manufacturer of the network device. For example, when I do an IP scan on an AV network, if I see 00107F, I know this is from Crestron. Not all of their devices begin with those set of letters and numbers. In the next video, we'll go more in depth on layer two and common networking IP classes used in AV systems. What are your thoughts about the new direction AV and Pro-AV is taking, leaving AV matrix systems for AV over IP? Leave your thought in the comment section and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it.